I've spent my life searching for animals that could be extinct. Yes! But these species, these aren't just endangered. They're about to be gone forever. But the real question is, can we actually save them? Or is it already too late? Today, we're looking at five animals that are right on the edge of extinction. Why they're disappearing, what's being done to save them, and whether I think there's any hope left. First up, the Yangtze giant softshell turtle. Let me introduce you to a species that might be down to literally just one. And the worst part, I actually saw this animal in the wild for myself. The Yangtze River giant softshell turtle, Raphidus swinhoi. This species is the largest freshwater turtle in the world, growing over six feet long and weighing up to 500 pounds. Unlike most turtles, the Raphidus has evolved away from having a hard domed shell, relying instead on its cryptic camouflage and impressive speed for defense. This turtle was once found in the rivers and lakes of China and Vietnam, quietly lurking beneath the surface, snapping up fish, crabs, snails, frogs, other turtles, all kinds of things. But today, it's barely hanging on. Right now, we only know of two or three individuals left on Earth, one in captivity and maybe one in the wild. And the last known female, well, she died in 2023, which means this species is not just critically endangered, it's functionally extinct. Like so many freshwater species, the Yangtze giant softshell turtle has been hit hard by habitat destruction, pollution, and overfishing. Dam construction has cut off its natural migration routes, turning once thriving ecosystems into fragmented dying waterways. And if that wasn't enough, these turtles have been hunted for decades with their meat and bones being sold in illegal wildlife markets. And that is of course how we got the species to this point. Now, here's the crazy part. In 2019, while filming Extinct or Alive in Vietnam, my team and I actually spotted a wild Yangtze giant softshell turtle. And not just any turtle, but the last confirmed female of the species. We captured video evidence proving this animal still existed, something that conservationists had been searching for for years in addition to getting eDNA confirmation. It was a huge breakthrough, but sadly, in April 2023, that very turtle died. That means the only known survivors are a single male in captivity at the Shouzhou Zoo in China, which has a broken penis, and one or maybe two unknown individuals in Vietnam. And without a breeding pair, the species is functionally extinct. The situation looks beyond grim, especially given that neither governments, neither the Vietnamese or the Chinese governments are willing to bring these animals together because they're not willing to part with their own individual animals. And I'm hoping that in speaking about this in this video, maybe we can create some kind of uproar or commotion that leads one of these two governments to just cave and bring the species to the other one because it's such desperate times. So what can be done? Well, at this point, there's really one of two things. Finding another wild female and creating a breeding effort is the only possible thing that could be done to save the wild population. The only other way to do that would be by taking DNA from the various dead specimens, the female that died in the zoo and the male that's in the zoo, and creating some kind of cloning project like Colossal is doing to try and bring this species back using other giant softshell species before it's too late. Look, I'd love to say there's a clear path to saving the species, but at this point, it's a massive long shot regardless of which direction we take. The numbers just aren't there. Without another female, there's no way to continue the species naturally. So unless scientists can discover another wild female or we come up with this radical new genetic way of cloning them, I'd rate the likelihood of saving the Yangtze giant softshell to be so unbelievably slim. I'd give it a one out of 10, which is just devastating given this is one of the coolest, most dinosaur-like species that has ever existed. Now let's talk about an animal even bigger, a species that might be even closer to disappearing forever, the Javan rhino. The Javan rhino is the least understood of all rhino species. Unlike the huge, aggressive black and white rhinos of Africa, the Javan rhino is much smaller, more secretive, and prefers dense rainforests over open savannas. But here's the terrifying part. There are fewer than 80 left in the wild. And once they're gone, that's it. There aren't any in zoos and no captive breeding programs. Their insanely low numbers come down to poaching and habitat loss. For centuries, Javan rhinos were hunted for their horns, 
which, despite being made of nothing but keratin, were worth more than gold on the black market, especially in traditional Chinese medicine. A single rhino horn can sell for $30,000 per kilogram, making them one of the most valuable targets for poachers. And even when hunting wasn't a threat, human expansion wiped them out. As people built farms, cities, and roads, the Javan rhino's habitat shrunk to almost nothing. At one point, these rhinos could be found all across Southeast Asia, from India and Vietnam to the islands of Java and Sumatra. But now, they only exist in one single place on the planet, a single national park at the western tip of Java, Indonesia. And just when it seemed like the species might have a chance, a massive new threat emerged. In 2023, Indonesian authorities arrested two gangs of poachers, and what they admitted was absolutely horrific. They confessed to killing 26 Javan rhinos between 2019 and 2023. To put that into perspective, that could mean one third of the entire species was silently wiped out without anyone realizing. And if that's true, the Javan rhino population could be much lower than we actually think it is. The last official population count was in 2019, before these poaching incidents happened. Since then, the only evidence of new individuals has come from camera traps that sometimes capture images of rhinos in the wild. We know that at least four new Javan rhino cobs have been recorded since 2023, but that's still nowhere near enough to replace the ones that were lost. Unlike the northern white rhino, there is no captive breeding program for the Javan rhino. No zoos have them, no private reserves are protecting them. Every single living Javan rhino exists in one forest in Indonesia, which means the only way to save them is to protect the last of their kind in the wild. Right now, conservationists are working to expand Ujang Kulon National Park, pushing back farmland and clearing spaces for the rhinos to spread out and breed more successfully. They're also trying to remove invasive plants like the oranga palm, which is taking over the forest and destroying the rhino's natural food sources. But the biggest priority remains stopping poaching once and for all. The Indonesian government has stepped up anti-poaching patrols, but as the 2023 confessions showed, it might not be enough. Honestly, this species is in big trouble. The fact that we don't even know how many are left is already terrifying. And if the poaching numbers are accurate, they could already be too far gone, but there is still some hope. As long as there are breeding individuals, which we know there are, and as long as poaching can be stopped, the Javan rhino might just have a chance to come back, even if it is somewhat genetically bottlenecked. Given this information, I would rate the likelihood of saving the Javan rhino and the fact that we as human beings are always reactive and not proactive, and we're trying to react now before it's too late, at a pretty healthy seven out of 10. All right, well, this is a lot of information to get through and remember, but luckily, anytime I'm doing an office day, I drink a Magic Mind. Now, these are the best because they give you a sharper mind, less stress, calm energy, all things I need, especially when talking about animals on the edge of extinction, because it really is a stressful and horrible thing to think about. That said, Magic Mind is a delicious and a wonderful thing to think about because it helps me think, it helps me focus, and it helps me stay on track. So, speaking of that, let's get back to it. So far, we've covered some of the rarest land animals on the planet, but this next species is so elusive that for over a century, people thought it was completely extinct. And even now, with fewer than 250 estimated to exist, it's barely clinging to survival, the Ganges River Shark. Imagine searching for an animal for over 100 years, only to realize it had been hiding in plain sight the entire time. That's exactly the case with the Ganges Shark one of the rarest sharks in the world, and the only shark species that lives exclusively in fresh water. Unlike other members of the Glyphus genus, which can survive in both rivers and coastal marine waters, the Ganges shark is a true freshwater predator found only in the murky, silt-heavy rivers of South Asia. For decades, this species was completely lost to science. Originally described from three museum specimens in the 1800s, it vanished not a single confirmed sighting for over a century. Scientists even mistook it for the bull shark, which also swims in fresh water, until DNA evidence proved otherwise. But then, modern records finally confirmed its existence. In 1996, researchers found a few specimens in the Ganges River, but after that, nothing. Then, in 2006, one was caught in a fishing net, and in 2016, another was spotted in a Mumbai fish market. 
that's how rare this shark is. Most of what we know comes from dead specimens that just happened to turn up. Honestly, it's a mix of bad luck and human activity. The Ganges shark only lives in a handful of rivers, which also happen to be some of the most overfished and polluted in the entire world. Its tiny, near-blind eyes suggest that it relies on senses like smell, hearing, and electroreception to navigate the cloudy, murky, debris-filled waters of the Ganges and the Brahmaputra River. Even with these adaptations, it's struggling to survive. Unlike bull sharks, which are aggressive and adaptable, the Ganges shark is slower growing, smaller, and much more vulnerable to environmental changes. And that's a serious problem. Like most endangered species, the Ganges shark is struggling for three big reasons. Overfishing, pollution, and habitat loss. And here's something insane. This shark has probably been declining for over a century, but because no one could tell it apart from bull sharks and other species, no one even noticed. There's one small glimmer of hope. In 2001, India actually banned the capture of the Ganges shark, making it one of the only sharks in the world with full legal protection. The problem? Nobody knows if it's actually working because the Ganges shark is so hard to find and they look so much like other sharks, scientists have no idea if the population is recovering or still shrinking. Conservationists have also started genetic studies to confirm where these sharks still exist, expanding their known range to Pakistan, Myanmar, Borneo, and even Java. But for now, the species is in serious trouble. Right now, the Ganges shark is one of the most endangered sharks on the planet and maybe even one of the rarest fish, period. That said, with the expansion of range, I would rate the likelihood of actually finding and saving the species in some remote freshwater body at a pretty decent 7 out of 10. The next species is barely hanging on in one of the most extreme environments on Earth, the Sahara Desert. This is the Attix, also known as screwhorn antelope this species is an antelope native to the Saharan Desert. There was a time when massive herds of addicts, also called the white antelope, roamed across North Africa, perfectly adapted to life in one of the hardest places on Earth. With their twisted, spiraling horns and pale coats that reflect the brutal desert sun, these antelopes can survive for months without drinking water, getting all their moisture from the grasses and shrubs they eat. But now, they're nearly gone. Once found from Algeria to Sudan, the Adax is now critically endangered with fewer than 500 left in the wild, most clinging to survival in remote parts of Niger and Chad. Like many animals on the list, humans are to blame. But there's some hope. Conservationists have started breeding programs in zoos, reserves, with thousands of Adax now living in captivity across Europe, the Middle East, and North America. Small herds have already been released into protected areas in Tunisia, Morocco, and Chad, and they are producing viable offspring. So what killed off the Attics? Well, first, there was rampant poaching. For centuries, it was killed for its meat, hide, and even its horns, which were prized as trophies. Then there's habitat destruction. As nomadic herders and human settlements expanded, the Attics' last remaining strongholds were pushed further into the most extreme deserts where food and water are almost non-existent. On top of that, the discovery of oil in Niger has made things even worse. Oil operations have pushed deeper into Attic's territory, destroying critical habitat and disrupting their fragile way of life. It's a deadly combination. Poaching, habitat loss, and human expansion. In Niger, one of the last places Attic still roam wild, conservation groups are tracking the few remaining individuals and working to protect their habitat. But with such a tiny wild population left, the real challenge is making sure the Attic doesn't become a species that only exists in captivity. The good news is that the Attix breeds well in captivity, meaning there's a real chance to reintroduce them into the wild at mass scale. The bad news? Their wild numbers are dangerously low, and without stronger protection and better habitat management, they could disappear completely from the desert. That said, I'd rate the likelihood of actually saving the Attix due to their ability to reproduce so regularly in captivity at a good 10 out of 10. Next up, a giant cetacean that is going extinct right beneath our eyes, the North Atlantic right whale. The North Atlantic right whale is in serious trouble. Right now, there are only about 350 of them left in the world. And even worse, only around 70 of those are females that can still have calves. That's barely enough to keep the species going. In 2024, last year, we saw a small glimmer of hope with 19 new calves born. But here's the brutal reality. 40 whales have died this year, 
with another 34 suffering serious injuries and 65 showing signs of severe health decline. The numbers just aren't in their favor. The biggest killers? Fishing gear and ships. Right whales migrate through some of the busiest waters on the planet, and because they swim close to the surface and move pretty slowly, they're basically sitting ducks for boat strikes. And if they don't end up somehow getting hit by a boat, there's a good chance they end up tangled in fishing lines, which is what happens to the majority of the animals that are documented today. When that happens, they can drag that gear around for months, cutting into their skin, making it impossible to swim properly, and slowly starving them to death. And that's not even mentioning changing sea conditions and warming seas. These whales rely on tiny crustaceans called copepods for food, but warming waters are pushing those food sources farther north than ever. That means right whales have to travel into new, riskier areas to eat, places where protections aren't as strong, putting them even more at risk of ship strikes and entanglements. It's a brutal cycle. But there is hope. Conservation groups are fighting hard to save them. Some scientists are developing ropeless fishing gear to stop entanglements, and there are speed limits in place for ships to reduce collisions. Hopefully that's gonna help. But the problem, a lot of boats don't follow the rules, and enforcement is spotty at best. If these whales have any shot at survival, it's going to take serious action. Tighter regulations, real consequences for rule breakers, and a whole lot of innovation. The fight isn't anywhere near over, but the clock is ticking on this amazing giant cetacean, and until we change some of our practices, the likelihood of saving the northern right whale to me, sadly, stands at a very unlikely two out of 10. Hey guys, this is kind of a depressing topic. I hate talking about animals on the edge of extinction, but it's an important topic and it's something that I hope many of you are as passionate about as I am. Thank you for tuning in. Do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know if you want me to do more breakdowns of animals on the edge of extinction.